Welcome to Channel 18 News. I'm Jim Rogers. The evacuation in Winsboro is now over. As Hopkins County Emergency Management Planning Team met Tuesday morning to consider preparation toward a tabletop emergency drill, in Winsboro Tuesday afternoon, the city of Winsboro and Wood County began responding to a fire at Valley Mill Speed that became a full-blown response to a potential disaster. The fire is under control as of early Wednesday. Smoke, gases, and fumes from the fire had remained a concern until noon Wednesday. The Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, Department of Public Safety, Wood County Emergency Management Fire Marshal, and the local fire departments and hazmat organizations were on the scene and responded to the emergency. A one-half mile area was evacuated as the fire spread through the facility on Tuesday. The evacuation stretched from along East Broadway Street from Walnut to Farm to Market Road 515 and from Farm to Market Road 852 to Highway 11. All businesses within the evacuation zone had been closed, no deliveries were made or received, and Keller's Creamery was within the evacuation zone. Residents in the area were, of course, evacuated, some going as far as Mount Pleasant to stay in hotels there. No school campuses were affected by the area. The air quality was retested and weather conditions evaluated Wednesday and the disaster or the evacuation removed. During an investigation by Special Crimes Unit, approximately 3.2 grams of methamphetamine were purchased from Kevin Taylor Umbaugh, age 27, of Scroggins. As a result of the purchase in the investigation, a warrant was issued for the arrest of Umbaugh. Special Crimes Unit investigators, DPS state troopers, and Franklin County Sheriff's investigators and deputies located him away from his residence and made the arrest. He's in Hopkins County Jail, charged with manufactured delivery of a controlled substance penalty group one, more than one gram, but less than four grams of felony two. When Hopkins County deputies received a call regarding an individual wanted on a blue warrant, a violation of pardon and parole, they found the man sitting in a vehicle outside his residence. With consent to search the vehicle, they found a plastic bag containing suspected methamphetamine. With permission to search his residence, there the deputy found more suspected methamphetamine along with a loaded syringe and glass pipe. The suspected meth weighed more than 11 grams. Roy Freeman Burkham, age 60 of Silver Springs, is in Hopkins County Jail charged with parole violation in possession of a controlled substance, more than 4 grams but less than 200 grams. When Lisa Faye Abraham, age 50 of Silver Springs, failed to signal required distance of her turn, a Silver Springs police officer made a traffic stop on her 2005 GMC Sierra at the corner of Texas and Ashcroft Streets in Silver Springs. With consent to search the vehicle, the officer found a glass pipe and melted, melted crystal-like substance in the pipe. Abraham was arrested for possession of a controlled substance penalty group 1, less than 1 gram, in a drug-free zone. Hopkins County Republicans initiated their new Republican Club Tuesday night at the Hopkins County Civic Center with a rousing mix of scripture and political philosophy presented by Rafael Cruz, father of U.S. Senator Ted Cruz. The event promoted the candidacy of the incumbent Cruz, who faces Democrat Robert, Robert O'Rourke in the November general election. Cruz emphasized the importance of voting and voting a straight ticket in the November election in Texas. He stated that with the number of electoral votes in Texas, it is imperative that Texans remain a red state, meaning a state with a strong Republican influence. Cruz noted that for a Republican not to vote for a party candidate was to vote for one of another party. Cruz, who fled Cuba in, to the U.S., is an evangelical preacher. His fervor was apparent in his use of biblical quotes to give evidence of what he called principles that should direct the voter during this election. He also noted that the campaign contributions received by O'Rourke were $8 million last month. He stated that the dollar amount had come from liberals wanting to defeat his conservative son. Cruz noted that his son was a strong supporter of President Donald Trump. He stated that his son met with Trump weekly to discuss the state of affairs in the Senate. He said it was important to keep a Republican majority in both the House and the Senate. He noted that if Beto O'Rourke lost the Senate race, he would be out of the House as well. 
Silver Spring City Council met Tuesday night in a special session to approve the second and final reading of a number of ordinances, some of which had to be approved before October 1st of this year. The council approved the tax rate, which will not change, but will see a slight revenue increase due to a higher evaluation of property in the city. The property values are set by the Hopkins County Tax Appraisal District. They also approved the appropriations ordinance for the city for fiscal year 2018 through 2019. The two ordinances were passed by a vote of four to two. The two opposed, Councilman Jimmy Lucas and Councilman Norman Sanders. All other items on the agenda were passed by a unanimous vote. 27, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries four to two. Number three, the discussion and action on the public hearing from the second and final reading of ordinance number 2728, setting the tax rate for the city of Sulphur Springs. Mr. Mayor, I move that the property tax rate be increased by the adoption of a tax rate of 44 cents per $100, which is effectively a 0.8% increase in the tax rate. Okay, thank you. Second. Been moved and seconded that we approve um, second final reading of artist number 2728, setting the tax rate. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Motion carries four to two. Item number three. Four, excuse me. Discussion and action on public hearing for the second and final reading of artist number 2729 setting the water rate for the city of Sulphur Springs. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve ordinance number 2729 on the second reading. Thank you. Second. We moved and seconded that we approve um, 2729 setting the water rate. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Six to nothing. Number five. Discussion and action on public hearing for the second and final reading of ordinance number 2730, setting the sewer rate for the city of Sulphur Springs. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve on the second reading ordinance number 2730. Thank you. Second. To be moved and seconded that we approve on the second and final reading of ordinance number 2730, setting the sewer rate for the city of Sulphur Springs. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Number six, action, discussion and action on the public hearing for the second and final reading of ordinance number 2731, setting the sanitation rate for the city of Sulphur Springs. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the second reading of ordinance number 2731. Second. Been moved and seconded that we approve the second and final reading of ordinance number 2731, setting the sanitation rate for the city of Sulphur Springs. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven, discussion and action on the public hearing for the second and final reading of ordinance number 2732, authorization of the update service credits. I make a motion to accept ordinance number 2732. Second. We move and second that we accept on the second and final reading, reading, excuse me, ordinance number 2732, authorization of the update service credits. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Discussion and action on public hearing for the second and final reading of ordinance number 2733 on the request by Harold and Karen Marks to resell property located at 1332 South Hillcrest from single family to light commercial. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve on the second reading of ordinance number 2733 for the rezoning request. Second. We moved and seconded that we um, approve on the second and final reading, ordinance number 2733. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Item number nine, discussion and action on the public hearing for the second and final reading of ordinance number 2734 on the request by Burt LC, LLC, Pat Chase and Carrie Knuckles to rezone property located at 435 Conley Street from single family to single family attached. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve on the second reading of ordinance number 2734 
the rezoning request. It's been moved and seconded that we approve on the second and final reading, ordinance number 2734. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. Number 10, discussion and action on resolution number 1154, a reimbursement resolution for the city of Sulphur Springs. Mr. Mayor and Council, as we discussed in the budget workshop and meeting, um, we would be we will be financing the list of equipment that um, is on the, in the in the resolution. Um, so what will happen is we will use the cash balances to pay for this and then reimburse ourselves with financing after the items have been purchased. Okay. And those were all items mentioned in, in when we were reviewing the budget for next year, correct? Okay. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the reimbursement resolution number 1154 as it's presented. Second. We move and second that we uh, approve resolution number 1154. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Visitors and public forum. Okay, I move that we adjourn at 610 p.m. Thank you for your time and service. It is almost time for the Cattlemen's Classic Ribeye Roundup. This is the fourth annual event for Sulphur Springs, and it's Friday, October 5th. Let's meet a couple of the organizers. Good morning, Dwight Bell. Good morning. How are you? And Dr. Mario Villarino. Buenos, well, good morning to everybody. <laughs> we just got me thinking about that. Um, our... 2018 Ribeye Roundup is not far off. We've got a party going on. It's uh, October 5th at the Plaza. And uh, yeah, it's it's in full swing. It's, it'll be here real quick. As always, it is a Friday. During the day you cook, in the evening we party. That is right. Uh, some of them start even in the day partying, I okay. think. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we do have a good time down there. And uh, lots of really good competition. And those cooking teams... Uh, they start preparing hors d'oeuvres for the public about 2 o'clock, so there's really a lot of good eats going on, too. There's a lot of beef that crosses those grills. A lot of beef. You're right. Yeah. And it's a great opportunity for everybody to be aware of how important is the beef industry for our community at different levels. Of course, the, from the consumer standpoint, but in reality, it's a great chance for people to get to meet those producers that actually participate, you know, sale barns and people like that. They usually are a little bit on their own world, but at this time, you know, this day, they will come together and join efforts to, to celebrate the importance of beef. We'll have a lot of ranchers there, and uh, uh, but like Mario said, most of it will be uh, uh, consumers uh, just coming out to have a good steak and uh, enjoy the, the, the time. And we will we'll be promoting beef. That's the whole point of this, uh, of this celebration that we do. And uh, it's to recognize all of the hard work that the ranchers do in, uh, in this area and the economic impact they have on everything in this area, the, all the businesses, and, and, uh, and to let people know that they're good stewards of, uh, of the things that God has uh, put in their hands to work with, the land and the cattle, and, and uh, that they're, they're trying to produce a quality product uh, for, the, for the consumer. And that's, that's what NetBio is all about. And, we just bring this this event to the to the plaza to celebrate that. About tickets so that you can get a fabulous steak plate in addition to your entertainment. Do you still have tickets or are you sold out? We still have tickets available. Uh, they can be uh, purchased at Brookshire's or at our uh, title sponsor location, Texas Heritage National Bank. Uh, or they can be purchased online on the Texas Heritage website. Okay. $25. Yes. And now you have entertainment too, and so we're going to get into that a little bit later, but the entertainment is a free concert. Absolutely. People can come over and just join that part if they decide to do so, you know, after the dinner. It will be open to anybody who can just bring a chair on or something that you can hang out in the square for a little while. Yeah. 
Now, Dwight, your son Brandon is also involved in organizing this annual event. He is. He's uh, he's the uh, manager of the Potts Feed Store Equipment, and so through through his efforts there, they they get all of the cooking teams actually signed up, and uh, I I think we have about 40 uh, teams registered this year in both the open and the restaurant division. So uh, a lot of them back from last year, but then we've got a, a, a lot of new teams that have come in this year too. And one of the things that's gonna be kind of fun, I think, is that uh, last year's champions in both the restaurant and the open division will be going head to head this year. Uh, the Smokehouse mm. Rats that won the open division have have kind of moved into some catering responsibilities and, and doing some other things that have qualified them in the restaurant division this okay. year. So Sulphur Springs Country Club and the Smokehouse Rats will be dueling it out for the championships <laughs> in the restaurant division this year. Okay then, so those guys moved over to the restaurant side and finding out about all these teams that love to cook and love the, uh, let's say, handling of beef so that it is presented beautifully to the consumer and deliciously. Every steak is fabulous. I've only sampled a few of them, but every cook out there is good. Um, your son kind of goes around to some of the contests across the South and finds uh, potential cooks. He has. He's uh, He's been to several of the different ones. You know, Heiko has their, they tout theirs as being the state championship. Uh, one of, it's a huge uh, uh, event, but uh, you know, I think, I think the thing that sets ours apart from uh, the others is that ours, we deal with with quality and professionalism and uh, a lot of the teams that come here and cook that attend the others say that this event here is is uh, by far by far the classiest event of any of them that they they participate in so we're kind of proud of that uh, we don't we don't commercialize it we don't bring in a lot of outside vendors and everything it's it's a quality uh, event that's designed to entertain the, the people that come to it. And we think we do a good job. We're, we're proud of that. I think you do too. And it's well organized and, and people can trust when they come to it. This is your fourth year. And of course you've learned as you've gone along, but it is a quality event. Some things happen that you might not see if you only come in the evening. And that is the cook-off competitions, but you will hear who wins. And you'll also be able to meet the judges. This is true, and uh, we've got a great slate of judges. <clears throat> uh, John Souls, John Soul Foods out of Tyler will be back again this year. Uh, Jonathan Lopez with Cargill. Uh, and uh, we have a new one, Trey Chapman, from over in the Fort Worth area, and people ought to kind of uh, check him out online and just, just Google him, Trey Chapman, and they'll, they'll, uh, they'll see kind of what he's about. But he's a... Uh, he's, uh, an interesting character and we're glad to have him here judging this year it's kind of a, a neat deal and uh, we've got uh, Tia Abels from Pittsburgh with uh, screw branches will be coming back she's been here every year and does a great job for us and of course Dr. Dan Hale from the uh, meat science department of College Station down there will be be back and and uh, Mario might want to talk a little bit about some of the things that Dan's got planned in addition to being a judge. And actually, it is a great opportunity for a program that we're, we're implementing throughout the state. It's called Path to the Plate. And actually, the awareness of how important local markets and local products mean to your consumption every day. And Dr. Hill will talk a little bit about that, specific for beef. But in general, it's all how, how critical it is to understand where your food comes from and, you know, put the proper ingredients in your diet to have a healthy, productive life uh, during it. So that we will have a small uh, event related to that during the dinner so people can actually get to know Dr. Hale and, and, and learn how critical it is to make the proper choices during your dining experiences. And beef is one of those critical ingredients, you know, by weight and ratio is one of those, uh, not only tastes good, it's also very very nutritious and healthy for your for your well this whole event the ribeye roundup cattleman's classic um, cook-off event is um, not only celebrating 
uh, the fact that we have plentiful food here in uh, where we live in the United States, but the quality of beef that's available to us, and also it's educational. As you dine, you'll be hearing some very important information. Yeah, and it's critical that people realize how important it is, that it is a support to our economy, you know, when they're consuming our own products. And I think that's, that's probably the main reason why we all get excited about this, because we'll get a chance to put people, you know, in front of each other and they can see that it's really a local product that we do impact our society and our community and we're an asset for it. And I think it couldn't be any any better layout than being on the city and the square and mm -hmm. their support because they have been gracious enough to actually provide us, you know, the, the, the ways that make this happen. And I remember talking to Dwight before we started this these projects. Um, and he wanted to inter interact with everybody at the different levels. And I think this is a good example of how many people and how many community members and businesses get together to make it happen. It's, it's unbelievable the kind of response we get from our county and our city uh, promoting us and helping us out. That, that's a good point that we sure want to remember, uh, not just our sponsors. Uh, Texas Heritage National Bank has stepped up to be the title sponsor this year. And then, of course, we have uh, Jay Hodge Chevrolet coming back in as another major sponsor again, uh, as they've been with us from the beginning. Sulphur Springs uh, Livestock, of course, is back uh, again this year as one of the major sponsors. We've added a new one, and that's uh, the uh, Corner uh, Grub House Restaurant uh, is coming in as a major sponsor. We're, we're very delighted to have them uh, join us, being right there, their, their establishments right there on the plaza. So it's, it's great. And, uh, you know, all of those people, some of those businesses down there say that last year's event, they did the, the biggest night that they ever had was last year at our event, uh, those uh, other establishments around the plaza. So we're glad that it brings business to, to everyone down there. And uh, this year we've added Lindsay's uh, plates and provisions. Mm -hmm. are going to be doing mm -hmm. the sides. And we're going to be serving all in one through one uh, large tent. And I think we'll, we'll see some improved uh, uh, way that we're going to do the okay. serving and the sides and all. And, uh, again, trying to bring just as much quality to the event as we possibly can. So. The cooking part is done during the day, not the cooking of your steaks, because those will be done when you are ready mm -hmm. to eat. But mm -hmm. through the day, there is a cook-off, and that's where we will be um, announcing those champions. But that is interesting to stroll through and watch through the day if you would like to, too. Absolutely, and it's, it's the whole the whole situation between a competition that we've been talking about this, you know, throughout the day, the critical part that the consumer can actually get and see the final product and actually enjoy it. And by I those think, guys. I think they have some tidbits there that they'll put out on a tray for you to try <laughs> as you pass by they, their tent. They definitely will. And and uh, and uh, Brookshire's, I didn't mention them while ago. Another major sponsor. They cut all those steaks for us. They they they're all certified Angus uh, ribeyes, and and uh, they'll be set up there on the plaza as well, uh, doing some hors d'oeuvres. They don't compete in the competition because of the fact that they're one of the major mm -hmm. sponsors and furnishing the beef they they've they've elected not to actually be in the competition okay, but, but they still set up and they cook and they they do things for the public just as giveaways and they they've just been a super sponsor from from day one and and we just appreciate everything that they do well brookshire's is a, a major presence or will be there on friday october 5th downtown and so the serving time is at 6 30. get your tickets online is it TexasHNB.com, Texas Heritage National Bank in person, or at Brookshire's? That is correct. That is correct. Oh, and don't forget the concert. The concert. This year we have Roger Crager. Uh, he's out of Corpus Christi, been around a long time. He's a country music, both songwriter and, and performer, and he and his band will be uh, uh, kicking off about 8 o'clock in uh I, I haven't had the pleasure of being to one of his concerts, but uh, from what I've heard, he, he's, a, he's a much better performer maybe than what some of them we've had in the past. So uh, we're looking forward to, to hearing Roger and, and uh, uh, seeing him perform that night too. And that concert is free. Whether you have a ticket or not, you may attend that. We want everybody to come on out and be a part of the celebration and uh, just uh, be there to enjoy it. We're actually celebrating beef. That is correct. And the different members and community uh, and businesses that 
you know, support the beef industry. Well, thank you for what you do. And you will find Dwight Bell over at Texas Heritage National Bank with branches in other towns. You get around to a lot of places during a week's time. I do. I do. <laughs> I, I travel to other locations that our bank services in Dangerfield and uh, Omaha and uh, uh, in Ore City and then uh, Sulphur Springs is has has grown to be our largest uh, 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 branch location and we're proud of that and glad to be a title sponsor for this event. Just walk into their lobby. You'll be a proud Texan by looking around at the decor. I love how your bank looks. Thank you. And find Mario everywhere and at Absolutely. our Hopkins County Extension there. Office. 1200 B. Houston Street, 903-885-3443. If they need any information, please give us a call. And actually, just to invite even families, you know, going back to that dinner experience that has been so, so critical for this event, just come over and have a good time to the square. The food is delicious. Right. Very safe environment, very friendly. You know, you get to meet your friends and have a good time. Thank you both for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll see you at the Ribeye Roundup. Here's Don Julian with sports. The Lady Cats volleyball team slipped to 0-2 in district play after a 3-1 loss Tuesday evening in Lindale. It was the second road match for the Lady Cats uh, in district play this season. I talked with Lady Cats volleyball coach Justin Manus on Wednesday morning. Lindell's a good team, and I knew it was going to be tough playing them over there. Uh, I thought we had a game plan going in, and I thought for the most part we executed it well as far as a game plan. We just, just some unforced errors, you know, uh, just down the stretch that beat us. And uh, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be an interesting district. Like I said, I don't think anybody's going to go undefeated. I think, I think Lindell's going to get beat. And, of course, uh, we've got some of our tougher ones out of the way, I think. You know, going to Royce City, that was a tough one for us, you know, just because of the history of us playing there and going to Lindell. And so they have to come and play us here. And uh, we're hoping to get on a hot streak like we did last year. We started 0-2, and, and then we just found our footing and just kept on rolling. I think we won 11 in a row last year. So um, you know, I'm just t trying to keep the ladies up and just, uh, just the mental game of it right now. I haven't seen the stats yet, but I would imagine Autumn Tanton, I mean, she just played with so much energy. Uh, she had a tremendous match. She had an unbelievable match. I was actually looking at the stats before you guys got here. I mean, she put up 19 kills. She almost had a 300 hitting percentage, uh, double-digit digs. Uh, she had maybe five blocks. I mean, she had an unbelievable night. Her energy, uh, about the third set, she turned on the energy. And that's something that we need a lot more of. We, just, we, just, we need everybody, all six players on the floor, playing like that, talking and just picking each other up. And uh, if we get to that point, we're going to be hard to beat. As far as unforced errors, I mean, you just is it just concentration and focus and all those things we hear about? Yeah, it's, it's, it's concentration. You know, in volleyball, you have to have a short-term memory. If you make a mistake, it's not something that you can dwell on because the ball's coming again. Right. I mean, you have to be able to uh, focus up and be able to, be able to make, make the next play. And, uh, you know, if you get down on yourself and, and get in your own head, that's not good in volleyball, you know. Uh, somebody, you're probably going to touch the ball at one point or the other in volleyball. It's not a deal where you can hide off to the side and not touch it. So, uh, you know, you have to be uh, mentally ready all the time. Yeah, and then when the other team, if they think you're struggling like that, they're going to find you. Oh, yeah, they're, they're going to expose it. And I, I'll do the same thing. If I think someone's uh, struggling in a serve or we're going to serve them. We're going to make them pass the ball. That's just the way volleyball's played, you know. And uh, that's where you have to know that as a player. If I'm struggling, you have to know that the other team's looking at me, and they're probably going to pick on me. Well, finally, home for yes. a district match, and uh, Greenville's coming in, and, and I'm sure they're a pretty good team, too. Uh, you know, just just can't take anybody lightly in this district, honestly. I, you got to show up and play every single time. Uh, I think it's good timing for us to be at home. I know that football's off, and uh, hopefully we can get some, get some people in the bleachers and, uh, and get some excitement going. Yeah, it's a it's a key match. You really need this one being 0 and 2. You know, yeah. If we, if we can get this one, you know, I'd, I'd like to finish the first half three and two. We finish the first half three and two. We're going to get some of those important matches back at our place in the second half. And you just never know, man. This thing could end up in a in a four way tie. You just never know how it could end up. So, but we have to do uh, we have to take care of business on our side first. Here are the stats from that Lindell match Tuesday night. As Coach Manus mentioned, Autumn Tanton had 19 kills, and that did lead the Lady Cats. Sidney Washburn, Lexi Wisenhunt, and Madison Vickery all had five kills, 
Abby Bayer had four, and Sadie Washburn had three. In assist, Wisenhunt had 27, and Sadie Stroud had two. In dig, Stroud had a team-high 24. Maddie Millsap and Wisenhunt had 13 each. Sadie Washburn and Tanton had seven apiece. Bayer and Taylor McElfresh had four digs each. And in block assist, Sadie Washburn had two, and Tanton had one. Thanks for watching Channel 18 News. Have a great evening.